Great, so in this video, we're going to talk about, in my opinion, what is the most significant problem in management, and that's bounded rationality. And I'm going to tie it into the study of multinationals and globalization. But let's talk about bounded rationality uh, in a very rudimentary sense. Our friends in neoclassical economics always say, well, consumers have perfect information and they make the most optimal and rational decision at all times. Well, you think about that from real world experience, that's not really true. Let me give maybe a colloquial example to talk about this. Okay? Let's say you're at uh, your favorite grocery store and you look and there's a bunch of peanut butter. Right? You know, five or six varieties of peanut butter. Do you, when you are buying peanut butter, take every single peanut butter jar off the shelf, count the calories, cholesterol, protein, nutritional facts, yeah, okay, and then you compare all of them and then you start looking at the price, well, you know, this is 10 cents more, but it's got another gram of protein, and you start taking out your calculator and punching the numbers. No, nobody does that. Well, at least nobody that I've ever seen. Um, what we typically do when we're at our favorite grocery store, you're looking at the, pro uh, the peanut butter on the shelf, you usually, you know, maybe with a significant other, they're yelling at you, you're in a hurry, you're getting the cell phone, uh, peanut butter, got a blue top, I like blue, you dump it in the cart and you go. Peanut butter, oh, I'll choose that brand because that's what I've used every day since I was six, even though it may be more expensive and less uh, nutritious. Dump in your cart and you go. This is a colloquial example of bounded rationality. The idea behind bounded rationality is we don't necessarily have the cognitive ability or the time to always make the best possible decision. We typically make the decision that is easiest or most convenient for or, or most convenient for us at a given time. So there's kind of two ways of looking at bounded rationality. You can look at it as like a cognitive opportunity cost. And you can look at it as just limited cognition. So the example that I gave about buying peanut butter at the grocery store is a cognitive opportunity cost. You know what, I just don't have the time to think about all the peanut butter and make the best possible decision. There's also the example of cognitive or limited cognition. And this would be, for example, you know, I teach management. I, I know a little bit about management. Um, but you know, there are certain things that I will never be able to do. For example, I will never be a physicist. I don't know really anything about physics. So if I were to meet one of my colleagues who's a physics professor, and he or she would tell me all sorts of wonderful things about physics, you know, I just assume that they were right because I have absolutely no capability to tell them that they're right or wrong. If they tell me it's so, well, I believe them. I don't know. Now let's go ahead and apply this to management in a general sense, and then we'll apply it to multinationals specifically. Think about it in terms of opportunity, cognitive opportunity cost in a firm. If you are a manager and you've worked your way from the, the bottom up in a firm, chances are you probably know how to do all the tasks that your subordinates are doing. In fact, you probably um, can do them better than they can do, right? But you, know, you don't do those tasks for them, right? Because now you're a manager, and so you delegate uh, to those managers, or you delegate to your subordinates. You assume that you know, you've got a bunch of tasks to do. You can assume that there are 10 or 12 people working for you. You can give them that, that guidance. You can train them. But once you give them the guidance and you give them the task, you kind of let them do it, right? Because you've got other people to manage and other things to worry about. So when you have delegated that degree of authority to your subordinates, you don't necessarily check up on them. You don't always know what they're doing. You hope that they match your intent, but maybe they don't. Okay, this is your you know, cognitive opportunity cost. You'd rather probably be talking to your boss and the CEO and whoever else about strategy or those kinds of things as opposed to you know, worrying about you know, the, the, the smaller level tactical tasks that your subordinates are doing. You just don't have time to check up on everything, right? You're focused on being a manager. You hope they're doing the right thing. Now, it can also pertain to limited cognition. Let's say you're a manager of a large retail store and you have an accountant working for you. Well, if the accountant tells you the numbers are wrong, well, you probably are going to trust that accountant. Um, you may not know much about accounting, but if they tell you the stuff is wrong, you're probably going to take their word for it, right? And that's another issue 
of management because that accountant actually may not know what they're doing or they may be wrong, but you don't necessarily have the capability to assess that. Now here's the question. How does this apply to multinationals? I'll use an example like McDonald's. Well, we know there's a corporate McDonald's here in the U.S. And when McDonald's goes overseas to somewhere like, um, you know, France, they assume that the French managers of McDonald's will recreate a McDonald's experience for them. And there's two parts of bounded rationality here. First of all, there's the cognitive opportunity cost. You know, the auditors and the inspectors from McDonald's don't have time to go from Chicago all the way to France to inspect every single McDonald's in France to make sure it matches McDonald's rigorous U.S. standards. They just don't have the time to do it. So they just kind of have to assume that they're doing the right thing. And of course, they can train their own inspectors and, and things like that in, in the French corporate side. But again, they just have to assume those French auditors are doing the right thing. They just don't have the time. McDonald's corporate is worrying about the overall strategy of McDonald's, not whether, you know, the McDonald's in Avignon on Main Street is doing everything that they're supposed to be doing. So they just kind of have to trust that they're doing the right thing. Now, normally everything will go okay. But as I've talked about during our discussion of multinationals and globalization, sometimes when you use, for example, contractors or outside groups, they may engage in, you know, unethical practices, human rights abuses, things like that. I'm not saying McDonald's does that, by the way. I'm just giving examples of how this can go wrong. Uh, some of you are probably familiar with Nike, for example, right? They delegated uh, some production of soccer balls to a contractor in a foreign country, and they were using child labor. Again, Nike didn't really necessarily have the time to check up on everything that the way that they should have. This is an example of cognitive opportunity costs. So as a multinational, you have to make sure that you train uh, your international partners to the standards that you want. But you also have to be aware of the fact that when you give them that, when you delegate that task, um, and when you give them that leeway to execute, they may not necessarily always do things to your standards. Okay, that's one of the problems with cognitive or bounded rationality. In my opinion, this is why bounded rationality is the number one problem in management. Then there's the other part about limited cognition. Of course, when McDonald's, for example, expands into France, um, the French manager can say, well, you know what would work really well here in McDonald's in Europe? And you know, the manager or the CEO of McDonald's said, no, I, I don't know. I, I don't know a lot about France. Can you tell me what would go really well? Because they don't know. They're Americans. And the, you know, the CEO, of the, or CEO of McDonald's France can say, well, I think that we should have better coffee in McDonald's we should serve beer, and we should have different menu items because this will be uh, work better for the French market. The CEO of McDonald's US can say, well, you're French. You probably know what will work for the French market. And then they can go ahead and have the degree of freedom to implement that. So this is, I don't have the time to inspect everything and I don't know, whereas this side of limited cognition is, you know what, you know your market better than I do. I'm going to trust you uh, to do the right thing. I'll give you some room for discretion. Go ahead and try it and see what happens. And this is why when you go to McDonald's, there are different menu items. Um, I know, for example, when, uh, in France, they had a variety of hamburgers that were different than the ones that we find in the U.S. In my opinion, they were delicious, but that's another story. When I went to Japan, they had great desserts full of custard and maple syrup in the McDonald's. Stuff that we don't have on the U.S. menu, but the Japanese CEO of McDonald's, or CEO of McDonald's Japan, said, I think this would work in Japan. And McDonald's U.S. said, you know what, go ahead and try it. So what you see here is the bounded rationale in multinationals, two sides. One, a possible room for a degree of abuse because the, the, the headquarters company can't necessarily check up on every single international partner. But then there's also a degree of positive creativity, understanding that there are great contributions that can also be made from foreign partners. Well, I hope this is... You know, I've, I've summarized something, a very, very large topic, bounded rationality, into a very, uh, very quickly, and how it applies to multinationals. I hope you found this explanation interesting, and I will look forward to seeing you in the next video.